Welcome back to the GCN Racing News Show. This week, who is starting their season where in 2021? We're going to take a look at what the big stars have planned for the start of the year. We've also got news of the first road races you can watch live on Race Pass this season and some bad news for Bora Hansgrohe and Junior Cyclocrosses. This week in the world of racing, we learned that Greg Van Avermaet is back aboard a BMC for the first time since 2018. Here's the new design for Adi Desir Citron, which I think you'll agree looks very smart indeed. And we also learned that Annemiek van Vleuten is back to doing what she does best, monster training rides. Uh, so last week she did a 220 km ride in southern Spain with the Movistar Men's Classic Squad in just over six hours, averaging almost 36 km per hour and taking a whopping 85 QOMs along the way. And finally in racing, we learned that Egan Bernal wants to ride the Giro d'Italia this year. Uh, the Colombian has never raced the Giro, or the Vuelta in fact, but it does appear he wants a challenge outside the Tour de France this year. And that got us thinking, where are the other stars of cycling competing and starting their seasons in 2021? Uh, well, let's start with Egan Bernal, shall we? Uh, he still appears to be recovering from that back injury which saw him withdraw from the Tour de France last year, but the rehab must be going pretty well because he looks set to start his season quite early, either at the Colombian National Championships or at the Volta Valenciana in early February here in Europe. Now, we don't as yet know where his teammate and former Giro d'Italia winner Richard Carapaz will begin his season. Uh, he's currently combining cycling with mountain hiking, judging by his Instagram. Uh, he posted a video there of himself running up the Chile's volcano on the Ecuador-Colombian border at four and a half thousand meters above sea level. However, we do have confirmation where Geraint Thomas will start his season at the Etoile de Bessege in France in just over two weeks time. And now Thomas, of course, last season didn't race very much, 24 race days in total, in fact. And so he's obviously keen to hit the ground running this year. World champion Judon Alaphilippe is still recovering from that hand injury he sustained at the Tour of Flanders last year. But it obviously hasn't put him off the cobblestones because whilst we don't yet know what his first race of the year will be, he has confirmed that he'll participate at the Belgian season opener Omloop Het Nieuwsblad for the first time in his career. Now, last year's winner of that race on the women's side, Annemiek van Vleuten, will be back there once again, but her first race is scheduled to be the four-day Setmana Ciclista Valenciana from the 18th to the 21st of February. Now, being in Spain, I'm absolutely sure that her new team, Mobistar, will be keen to see her perform well there. And being Annemiek van Vleuten, I have absolutely no doubt that she will smash it. Current world champion Anna van der Brugge, meanwhile, is embarking on her last year as a pro cyclist before retirement, but it's currently unclear exactly where she'll kickstart her season. And that actually is the case for most of the top female riders, but hopefully we'll have more news on the likes of Voss, Diagnan, Utrup Ludwig, Longo Borghini, etc, etc, over the next couple of weeks or so. Moving on, and Joao Almeida, who of course was one of the revelations of last season, has slightly surprisingly decided to make the Vuelta a España his main goal for 2021. Uh, he revealed that at his team training camp uh, just last week and says that he'll have a whole team built around him for that Grand Tour, but that doesn't mean he won't start his season reasonably early. It looks as though he'll start at home in Portugal with the Vuelta at Algarve, which also looks to be the place where Chris Froome will race in Israel's startup nation colours for the first time. Uh, he was due to start in San Juan in Argentina, which has now been officially cancelled. It's going to be very interesting to see how his form is after a winter training in the US. In fact, I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Will Chris Froome get close to his best again in 2021? You can let us know your thoughts in the poll over on the GCN app, a link to which you should be able to see on your screen right now. Personally, I wouldn't put anything past Chris Froome, but I also don't see him winning a Grand Tour this year. So there's a wishy-washy prediction for you. Neo Pro Tom Pidcock's racing program has also been revealed, and it's just as eclectic as you would expect. Uh, he was speaking to Patrick on the Lantern Rouge podcast and said he'll join Team Ineos straight after the World Cyclocross Championships at the end of this month. After that, he's going to compete at the Mediterranean Epic Mountain Bike event, followed on the road by Algarve, Omloop Het Nieuwsblad, and Kuna Brussels Kuna in Belgium. After that, he will do Strada Bianca, which seems like a race very much up his street. And in June, he'll do a block of mountain bike racing, followed by the Olympics, and then competed his first Grand Tour in August at the Vuelta. 
Now, with the likes of the Tour Down Under, San Juan and Tour Colombia all cancelled this year, the first big pro road event for the first time in years will be in Europe. Uh, that was scheduled to be the Challenge Mallorca, which unfortunately has also been cancelled. And so now, provisionally, the season opener will be on Sunday the 31st of January with the one-day Grand Prix Marseillaise, which I'm very pleased to say we will have live on Race Pass in every territory in which Race Pass is available. Happy days. Now, amongst the seven World Tour teams there is Lotto Soudal, and they've already confirmed a strong trio of riders for their lineup. Former winner of the race, John Degenkolb, plus Philippe Gilbert, and a man who's normally very much on form right from the start of the year, Tim Wellens. Those same three riders will also compete at the Etoile de Bessez the following week, which looks to be where Bauke Mollema was kickstart his season for Trek Segafredo. And whilst we're talking about the Dutchman, both he and teammate Vincenzo Nibali will be doing both the Giro d'Italia and the Tour de France this season. But whilst Mollema starts his season in France, Nibali will start his a little further south in Spain at the Volta a la Comunitat Valenciana, which starts on the 3rd of February. And that appears to be where a lot of stage racing talent has decided to pin a number on for the first time in 2021. So according to the organisers, Giro d'Italia winner Terry Gegenhardt is amongst them, as is Simon Yates for Team Bike Exchange, Alejandro Balverde and Marc Soyer for Movistar, and Wout Pools for Bahrain Victorious. It also looks like we'll see a fair few sprinters at that race, with Ewan, Ackerman, Demar and Viviani all on the provisional start list. And that was also the race where we were expecting to see Remco Evenepoel return to competition after that horrible crash at the Tour of Lombardy last year. However, speaking at the De Kerning Quick Step training camp last week, he surprised us all by saying that he hasn't ridden his bike for a couple of weeks and that he wasn't sure when his body would be ready to start competing again. He is hoping he recovers to 100% very soon indeed. Meanwhile, the UAE Tour confirmed the participation of all 19 World Tour teams last week, plus Alpes in Phoenix, including Mathieu van der Poel. That is where we'll see him on the road for the first time in 2021. And he'd also imagine that Tali Pogaccia will be there for his team, being UAE Team Emirates, although as we record this, that is as yet unconfirmed. What I have managed to confirm, though, is that he will be competing at both the Tour de France and the Vuelta a España this year. Now, remarkably, this year's tour will only be his third Grand Tour, but you wouldn't put it past him doing the double this year, would you? Now, his compatriot and arch-rival, Primoz Roglic, will wait a little longer before competing for the first time this season. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, given how far he raced through last year and how long he was at the top of his form. Paris-Nice in early March looks to be where he'll be returning to racing, and that's a race, actually, that he has never done before in his career. He's also been confirmed for the Tour de France, where he has some unfinished business, of course. And he, like many others, has the Olympic Games as a big focus for his year. Now, another of those riders focusing on the Olympics is Jakob Fulsang of Astana Premier Tech, uh, who will have the Tour and the Olympics as his big goals this year. But he will start in mid-February at the Volta Andalusia and take on the Tour of Flanders for just the second time in his career in early April. His teammates and up-and-coming GC star Alexander Vlasov will start as he did last year at the Tour de la Provence, but his focus will be this year on the Giro d'Italia. As it will be for Thibaut Pino, apparently, which may well open the door to Demar racing the Tour de France this year, which I think we would all love to see. And finally, Peter Sagan. Well, there has been talk about an ambitious schedule that includes the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, the Olympic Games and the World Championships. Although, speaking at his training camp last week, he said that nothing was confirmed in that regard. However, he will make his season debut at the Omloop Het Nieuwsblad and Kuhne Brussels Kuhne at the end of February in Belgium. Now, moving on to more general news, and unfortunately, the season start could well be delayed for a number of Sagan's teammates at Bora Hansgrohe. So the team have been on a training camp together in Italy, and on the very final day, seven of their riders were involved in a very nasty crash into a car which didn't give way to them. Three of those riders ended up in hospital, including new recruit Wilco Kelderman. Uh, he sustained a fractured vertebrae and concussion in that crash. Andreas Schillinger suffered a broken vertebrae, whilst Rudiger Selig was also concussed, but thankfully didn't break anything. That's a horrible thing to hear or read about ever, and of course all of us here at GCN wish those riders a very speedy recovery. For different reasons, Miguel Angel Lopez could also have a delayed start to his season with his new team Movistar, as he flew over to Europe from Colombia last week and unfortunately tested positive for COVID-19 soon after arriving. He will now miss the team's training camp, but it remains to be seen if that will also mean a delay to the start of his season. 
Right, we're going to move on to cyclocross now. And uh, whilst we didn't have any live racing over on Race Pass last weekend, there was a race. Uh, whilst many cyclocross riders are preparing for the World Championships in warmer climes in southern Spain and the Canary Islands, for example, there were still some hardy souls who decided to remain in Belgium for the Zilvermeer Cross in Mull. A course famous for its sand sections, in fact. Lucinda Brandt continues her excellent season with a win. Uh, she got the better of Denise Betzema on the final lap. Whilst in the men's race, Wout van Aert looked strongest in the sand pit and landed his first win in the Belgian Tricolore jersey. Incredibly, Despite having won four national titles, that was actually the first time he's ever been able to race in his national colours in his career. So in previous years, he's either had to wear the World Cup leader's jersey or the rainbow bands of world champion. It's a tough life, isn't it? Uh, thanks very much to Cyclocross24 for that stat. He and Brandt are of course continuing to build up towards the World Cyclocross Championships in a couple of weeks' time. And on that subject, the UCI last week released a statement in which they announced the cancellation of the junior races at the World, which is a massive blow to that generation of riders. So the elite and under 23 races are still set to take place as planned, but for some reason, it was deemed not safe enough in these COVID times to have the junior races too. And I really feel sorry for the riders in that category, in all cycling disciplines in fact, because they've missed out on a hell of a lot of racing over the last year or so. Anyway, back to the racing that is on, and I wanted to let you know what is coming up on Race Pass. So after a brief break, we've got a packed weekend of racing coming up for you. So on Saturday, it is the X2O Badcomers Trophy from Hammer. Uh, that's available worldwide except for Belgium. And on a Sunday, it's the final round of the World Cup in Overraiser. That one is live in Europe and Japan. And in fact, it's not long now until our first live road race of the season. Uh, obviously, things have been delayed somewhat with the cancellation of a number of non-European early season races, but we do have one for you before the end of this month, the aforementioned Grand Prix Marseillaise. Now, that is a long-standing opening one-day race in southern France, which will be produced live for the very first time this year. Happy days again. Uh, it's going to be available worldwide too, and given that there isn't much or any road racing elsewhere, we are expecting a pretty good start list for that one. We're also going to have coverage of the Volta Balenciana and the Tour de la Provence soon after that, but territory restrictions do apply for those ones, so make sure you check what is available in your country. Also, stay tuned for a much more detailed look at what's coming up on Race Pass this year. I'm incredibly excited about all the racing we are going to be bringing you. Right, we shall finish the racing news show this week with the news that Stefan Denifel has been sentenced to two years in prison for blood doping between 2014 and 2018. The Austrian was involved in the Operation Adlas blood doping investigation, and although 16 months of the two-year sentence is suspended, it does mean that he's going to spend eight months behind bars, and that is on top of a €350,000 fine. Meanwhile, the doctor at the centre of that scandal, Mark Schmidt, has been handed a five and a half year prison sentence. And those decisions will hopefully send out a very strong message to any other person considering any kind of doping. Right, that is all for this week's racing news show. I'll be back next week, of course, and with the GCN show tomorrow, so I hope to see you then. Don't forget to subscribe to GCN Racing here on YouTube if you haven't done so already. And if you feel like giving this video a like, I'd very much appreciate it. Cheers.